bacon wrapped meatloaf? Heck yeah. Hey there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, I'm going to make a meatloaf in the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven. Not just any meatloaf, a bacon wrapped meatloaf. Because you know why? Easy answer. Everything's better with bacon, always. First, we got to go ahead and prepare a few things. And without further ado, let's get to it. First thing you want to do is preheat the Max. Go to oven, leave it on bake. I would up the time quite a bit just to allow for extra time to prepare everything. It's going to be cooking for about an hour, so I'm going to give it an hour and a half and leave it at 375 and let her go. While it's preheating, the bake light will blink. When it's done preheating, the bake light will turn solid. You want to start off with a medium-sized mixing bowl, and we're going to put all the ingredients in except for the beef. I'm going to start with a finely chopped medium onion, two large eggs, a few minced garlic cloves, three tablespoons of ketchup, a couple tablespoons of parsley, three quarter cup panko breadcrumbs, a third cup of milk, one and a half teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons Italian seasoning, and I have a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of Hungarian paprika going in. Next go ahead and whisk everything together until it's pretty combined. Now I'm adding two pounds of 8515 ground beef. You could use whatever cut you like. Some people like more fat, some people like less fat. Next, you want to get on in there and mix everything up together, okay? Very important that everything is well combined. Don't be afraid. Get in there and mix it up very well. And that's just going to about do it. Looks like everything's mixed in now. Next, you want to grab a 9x5 loaf pan, and I have one that has a trivet that goes in. I got this off of Amazon. It's made by Nordic Ware. I will list in the description of this video where I purchased it. For right now, we're going to start without the trivet. I'm going to go ahead and apply some cooking spray. And this is kind of like a dual step process. You'll see what I'm talking about. I was watching some YouTube videos, and this is a trick that I saw. So we're going to turn the pan upside down, and we're going to use a magic marker to trace around the outline of the pan. Good enough. Next, you want to take the meatloaf mixture that we put together and spread it out in the pan as even as possible. It's not going to stay in the pan, but for a minute. But we're just trying to get a basic shape established. That's looking pretty dang good. Next, we're going to take the parchment paper that we traced the outline, and we're going to turn it over. You don't want the meat hitting the ink, you know? So the ink's underneath on the bottom side. Next I got some applewood smoked bacon and I'm going to go ahead and put strips going across starting at where I marked it. And there we go. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strips of bacon going across and I'm going to kind of tap it down. Now if everything works out properly, the meatloaf will come out of the pan. And I'm going to set it right around where I believe the line to be. There we go. And you could kind of tidy it back up a little bit if it deformed on the way out. But what we're getting at here is the bottom of the meatloaf pan is a little bit smaller than the top. So the top is going to be completely covered with bacon and so is the bottom. What we're going to do is take our strips and fold them over. Now if you have additional strips of bacon you could also put some crossways and double up on the bacon but that's all I got on me for right now. Next let's move this aside 
and I got the trivet in the loaf pan and see if I could swiftly do this without it all coming apart, right? There we go, right? And you could tap it down. Make sure everything's in there. Make sure it's even. But you see, that's what we're looking at. All you see is lovely, delicious bacon on the top. To start the glaze, I'm starting off with a third cup of ketchup and a few squirts of hickory barbecue sauce. About one and a half teaspoons of white vinegar. Approximately two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. Teaspoon of garlic powder. And about a half teaspoon of onion powder. Next, we're going to go ahead and stir all that together. Make sure everything is well combined. And we're going to baste it on pretty lightly at first. So definitely save the rest of the glaze. You're going to be needing it. Next, I adjusted the max for 50 minutes. We're going to let it cook for almost an hour. And put the tray in, or the pan in. And I'm going to put it about halfway back, not all the way back. I don't want it too far to the rear so that way the bacon doesn't get done any faster in the rear than it does in the front. So I'll check back with you after 50 minutes. There we go. Time's up. Going to go ahead and remove it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on oven. Add a bunch of extra time because I got some other steps. And we're going to set it on 400 and let her rip. Meanwhile, here's a look at the meatloaf so far. I'm going to quickly temp it. Yeah, it's only at 112 degrees right now. Perfect. What I'm going to do is let this rest for 10 minutes. Then I'm going to remove it from the pan and go on to the next step. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and try to remove it. There we go. Put it on this paper towel. In addition to that, I'm also going to insert the meter probe. That way I have an idea of what temperature it's at and I know when to remove it. So I'm going to put the drip pan down in the lower position. Alright, so I got the meatloaf in there. 400 degrees. I set it for 25 minutes. I have a temperature probe in there. Hopefully that helps assist. And I'm hoping that the sides of the bacon cook a little bit more. It's been going about 15 minutes and internal temp is at 140 little smoke from all the grease, no big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. That's what I'm looking at now. And the reason why I removed it is because of that glaze that I put on earlier. I wanted the bacon to crisp on top a little bit. And if I had all this glaze on there, it wouldn't give it that opportunity. So we're going to go ahead and apply the glaze more generously this time. The sides of the bacon still need to cook a little bit more, I could tell, so I'm not going to hit the sides. So that should be pretty dang good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it back in, close her up, and continue monitoring the temperature. And like I said, hopefully the sides of the bacon crisp up a bit more. Okay, internal temperature is around 160. I don't really want it to go much further. So let's go ahead and remove it. Okay, it's been resting about 20 minutes. Let's see if I could get it off the trivet. Oh yeah, wow, just slides right off, huh? Check that out. Now let's see if I could cut into this bad boy. Just going to go ahead and cut in a quarter section right there. The knife definitely cut right through it like butter. See if I could show you the inside cross section. Yeah, it looks really good. Now let's see if I could cut a slice. Oh yeah. After looking at it, I will say that the bottom, the bacon didn't really get crisp or anything like that. So I think next time I'm just going to do it without a pan altogether. In fact, what I think I might do is put it back in the max upside down to see if I could turn it on air fry mode to get the bacon to crisp. That might actually work. So I had it in the max at 425 for about 10 minutes and the bottom definitely looks a lot more done now. In fact, I'm going to make the bottom the new top and we're going to go ahead and base some of that sauce on. That glaze. Boy, 
Boy, that looks delicious, though. And while it was cooking, the piece that I already cut off, I tasted, and it was really delicious. So we're going to let that rest for just a few. Now it's been resting for about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and slice into it. Yeah, that's looking good. And the bacon is definitely cooked all the way around perfectly. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and go back up top and I'll sample it with you guys. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a look at the piece I just cut. Let's check it out, huh? I was afraid I might need a knife for the bacon, but no, the pork cuts right through it. Perfect. Oh, that's good. That's really good. The glaze I put together tastes so good. You can tell it's like a ketchup base, but it's got a barbecue flair to it. And with the um, granulated onion and garlic that I threw in there, man, it's so good. And um, everything about the meatloaf, the texture, the flavor, just so good. I've had meatloaf at a bunch of different restaurants. And sometimes it's kind of less than gratifying. I mean, this is actually better than a lot of the restaurants I've had meatloaf at. Keep in mind, this is a simple, basic meatloaf. You're welcome to add other things to it. Some people put carrots, some put celery, some... I've heard put potatoes. Meatloaf is like one of those things that you could add of just about anything and make it the way you want to make it and own it, you know? But for me, this is just perfect. The only thing I could think of that would have made it better for me, you already know the answer, <laughs> is um, probably putting some like hot pepper powder into the mix while I'm mixing up the meat and all the other ingredients. Maybe next time I'll use some either ghost pepper or Carolina Reaper powder. You know, kick it up a notch. But flavor-wise, this is great. Next time I cook it, though, I definitely think I'm going to do it without the meatloaf pan. Maybe just on the trivet. And I also think turning it over to crisp the bacon on the bottom was a perfect idea um, because it really wasn't looking that well done on the bottom, the bacon at least. Um, I'm sure it was cooked because it's in an oven at a high temperature for a long time, but it just wasn't crisp, you know. And I like baking crisp. You could just cut through it with a fork, you know. And you could see I'm like done with that meatloaf. Almost every last little bit right there. There we go. So good. So also another side note I want to mention is um, one of the guys on the property, Aaron, I gave some to try just right before I filmed this segment. And he's like, wow, this is like incredible meatloaf. And I'm not BSing you. Shoot, I should have taped him eating it. That would have been really cool. But yeah, he definitely gave it like a double thumbs up. And he tried the meatloaf I made last weekend, which was very similar, uh, just without the bacon. And he really liked that as well. But he's like, yeah. Bacon makes everything better, doesn't it? It really does. So, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Please, give me a comment and I'll respond back to you. You know, I thoroughly enjoy interacting with you. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I got all kinds of good stuff coming up. And with that said, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me. I'm KJ Andio, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.